everyone here from the um, from the building committee, Walbert, Jabel, Rashid, Foley, Chen, Tully, and uh, Amy. So uh, we're from Carol. So we're all here from um, from the committee um, from the town. Uh, we have uh, Kevin, uh, Joe. Um, we have Tiger, right? Leon, um, Frederico. And as an advisor, we have Stuart. So we have Maria as well, Bill. <clears throat> Maria. Thank you. Hi, Maria. Um, so uh, that's, is that it? Am I missing anyone? Kevin, were there any questions that came in? Kevin, were there any questions that came in from the public? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't hear that. Did you, did you ask for comments? I think Joe did. Was... Joe did, and they should be sent to you. Yeah. yeah. They gave him your personal cell phone number, your home address. And <laughs> That's already and out there. Where you, and said you can be reached 24-7. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, I will look, and if, I, if we see any, I'll bring them to your attention. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll just remind people that it's a special meeting and therefore we need to keep to the uh, to meeting agenda. We can't really uh, uh, deviate from that. And the other thing I'll mention early on is that uh, a, a typo in the agenda, um, you know, it really should read uh, police location, uh, not relocation. Yes, agreed. Right. You all uh, okay with that? And uh, from there, um, everyone hopefully has the, uh, and Joe, thank you so much for the uh, draft um, uh, contract. This is not. That was set up, um, you know, sent around to the committee uh, yesterday uh, to, uh, to, uh, to discuss and discuss our next steps with, uh, with Brian Humes. And of course, Brian is here today as well. Brian, thank you. And um, we were very impressed with your presentation that you gave to, uh, to this committee, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. And uh, we've also been very impressed with the work you've done for this, uh, for this town in the past, and we appreciate it very much. And um, uh, we look forward to working with you as a building committee you know, going forward. So uh, uh, this part of the uh, project, if you will, a proposed project, uh, is an important one because it helps the building committee get the, the facts needed uh, so that the citizens of New Canaan can help decide uh, the best uh, best steps forward for what to do with uh, to uh, deliver to this community a, uh, uh, a new or refurbished uh, police building. So thank you very much. For, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, really, the purpose for this meeting is to um, see if there's any tweaks that need to be made to the uh, draft contract. Um, and there's a couple ways we could we could go about that. Uh, one, we could uh, um, you know have it put into a, a word document so that we can uh, uh, have um, any committee members that would like to uh, uh, to modify or clarify be able, you know have the ability to do so before we uh, um, you know before we submit it to the first selectman's office to uh, to have the contract. Uh, uh, signed. So that's uh, that's one proposal. Jim, are you done? Bill, uh, I'd like to, before we move forward in that, I'd like to ask, uh, has uh, uh, Joe, has Brian seen this before? Has Brian has, Hume seen this? The design? It's, it's his, it's his Brian document. Drafted it. Brian drafted it. I so, okay. it. Well, that, so that it's, was it's, his, it's his draft. I did not share with the whole committee. Um, I thought the intent of the meeting today would be to um, go through his scope in more detail. It is a draft, and then we could comment on any of the legalities of his, of his agreement, but uh, really to pinpoint his scope and let him uh, lead us through the next step in the process. Okay. I, first thing I want to make sure, Bill, before we get started, is that uh, we had Brian's input. That was not clear. That, that was certainly not clear <laughs> us. So I guess other than the fact that he wrote the document, he doesn't know anything about it. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> no, I've had uh, communications with Joe in the last uh, couple of weeks. He's been giving me feedback and input. And the 
description of the tasks was actually generated through the town of New Canaan and I inserted it into a design agreement. Now the design agreement that I proposed is one that New Canaan's familiar with from past projects. Uh, the format is, is a similar format to when we last updated the space needs assessment two years ago. We did it in a similar format. So I was proposing a similar format, just changing the tasks to be performed. So I could share this on the screen if, and if, if you want me to do that and, and if I have the ability to do that. I don't know if everybody's seen this. I, uh, I, don't know. I, I, I actually have it up on a separate document so I can read it as we talk. Um, if other people okay. need it on the screen, that's fine. Yeah. I don't know I if we can. Well. A committee doing uh, writing a draft, writing a document, I think it'd be better if we had people submit their suggestion and have one person consolidate it. Otherwise, we'll be here for three, five hours trying mm -hmm. to get it wordsmith. Right. We might just have Brian go do a sort of a, a, a brief overview of what he was thinking. So we, um, while we have him on the phone, is, and, and then we can get into, you know, smaller smaller details i agree i agree right i think the uh the most important thing to go through would be the scope of work which is article one right uh the description of tasks to be performed uh we understand that our assignment is only going to be limited to 174 south avenue uh, so we are looking at that site and we are going through three scenarios on that site and I did a little bit of wordsmithing on the email that I received on the option A, B, and C, just so I could, it, it would read right in this agreement. Uh, for instance, I took out the word Brian Humes in some of these sentences and inserted the, uh, like say we or, or the consultant. Mm -hmm. But option A is, is pretty clear. It's a renovate the current police facility Grade level parking in the rear as currently exists, uh, South Avenue Cottage to remain, and then provide the analysis of renovation plan and costs. Um, it says three items there. One is remediation cost of existing building. And when I hear the word remediation, I'm thinking of hazardous materials. So uh, as I spoke to Joe earlier, I believe there has been a hazardous abatement uh, scope already done by another company. I'm pretty sure we had to do that when we when we renovated the third floor and put an elevator in the building and did some other renovations that we must have had some scope already completed by an industrial hygienist. So we should have that document and we can review what hazardous materials are still existing in the building and get a cost on, on removal. And the second component is the cost of renovation and expansion with and without a firing range. And when we say practice firing range, that's, a, that's not just a simulation area, that's for certification of firearms. So you're looking for a 75 foot range for certification for with and without the range. And what, what your, what's your assumption in terms of the number of lanes you'll be using? I think we only had the ability to do about three lanes in the lower level okay. when we looked at it last time. Three lanes. Yeah. And then the excess cost of offsite relocation of the PD for up to two years during construction. Uh, that would give you an ability to, in option A, ability to take the PD offsite to give the contractor the entire site for renovation. So you wouldn't have any public uh, need to go to this building during construction, to renovate the whole thing and get it back and then they'd move into a completed renovated building. So that's option A, uh, the, the change that happens. Hey, Brian, can I make a comment yeah. before you pass that? Actually, the word remediation was used for two reasons. One, the building has a major water problem in the front of the building. And I, Bill Osman's not on this call, but Bill could describe it. Tiger, can you describe it? I mean, it's, it's really requires a major fix of that, for that front because of the way they, when they made the building, a. a Police department, rather than a high school, removing the front steps, it, it's it's created a a problem that has to be remediated in terms of the water problem. So, and then with respect to the firing range, I would I would think that one of the options you're going to consider is tearing down the existing addition in the back, which was a either a cafeteria or a gymnasium for the high school, mm -hmm. and and a adding on a, a a new building 
a new a new portion of the building that would give you the opportunity to have a firing range there. Um, I thought we were off the firing range. Are we just trying to throw it in there to see what what it might? I think no, 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 no. We're not off the firing range. No, no. I think, I think we, have to, we have to consider it, Amy, especially with a new building, because you know when we talked about sharing a facility with Wilton or somebody, we were talking about sharing the cost. I mean, if, you know, if we were going to do half and half with Wilton, we'd be in for half a million dollars anyway. I think we should look at it and get an idea about what the cost is. I mean, we don't. We, it, we're not committing to it. We're just understanding what the parameters are. But, yeah. but Kevin, you're still continuing to explore the Wilton option, right? Well, and Bethel. I mean, we, you know, even Bethel. You know, we talked about the possibility of having three three uh, departments go in with Bethel, since most of our officers live over in the Moreau, Trumbull. You know, yeah. Bethel is as easy as to get to for most of our officers in Canaan. And, and I think that's worth pursuing because when you're looking at a police facility range for New Canaan or Bethel or or Wilton. For the single department to utilize that range for certification is really low use as far as range equipment goes. Uh, range equipment is is designed for heavy use, and just to have one department utilize these is, is really uh, the range sits quiet for a good portion of the time, and it doesn't get a lot of use. So, other other towns going in regionally would not tax the equipment that's there. It's it's designed for continual use. Hey, yeah, Brian. hey Brian, Brian, of all the recent renovations and new police headquarters that have been built, haven't all of them put in their own ranges? No. Stanford, Darien, Bethel, Newtown. Well, you, you just yeah. named three that did, but I can name, yeah. you know, there's probably less than 50% put in a range <laughs> of all the, the ones I work on. Okay. Could I get right. a list of those as well, right. please? Did you do Darien? Yes, we did. You know, I mean, rather than us doing Wilton or Bethel, it probably would make more sense for us to work with Darien because they have a beautiful range yep. that is used, as you say, a limited amount of time. Yeah, and just Darien using it alone is, is not getting a lot of use on that equipment. Right. But I can comment on that. Um, Bethel, in my opinion, would not be a good fit. We might as well just keep doing what we're doing because it's so far away. It's an hour plus away for the majority of us. Um, other than those that live close to it. And separately, um, last time I spoke with Darien's chief, uh, he was not um, all that thrilled with adding additional use to his range because apparently uh, the range position when there is uh, firearms being uh, fired in the range, uh, the offices next to it are unable to work because there's so much noise. And he also related some kind of issue related to ventilation uh, when there's heavy use in the range. So I, I don't think he's thrilled with us sharing it and that'd be an ideal fit, but I'll, I'll, I'll have another conversation with him and see if he's interested. Uh, but, we shouldn't, we shouldn't decide whether to share or not right now. We just ought to know no. the internal cost right. of putting it in a range. Right. 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 Thank you. Designed that today. Right. No, Thank we, you. We have to explore it for sure. That's yeah. We just need to know the in and out cost. Yes. Thank you. And I, and I think talking about tearing down portions of the existing building is more toward option B. Uh, in the design agreement, because that's when we, option A is, I read it is just do the best you can with what you have uh, in the existing building. Option B gives us ability to demolish uh, all or portions of. So this is when we can look at that back addition. We can even look at the garage addition that we had put on uh, not too long ago. And those are all candidates for, is there a higher and best use uh, for the back of the building? to give you covered parking, to give you some of the amenities that you can't fit within your existing construction. So option B uh, opens up the avenue for what stays and what goes. And, and can we make the, the building better by removing some of it and then replacing it? With, with option B, the, the way it reads now seems like it ties your design hand to make sure we incorporate some look or part of the old school. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you had a free range, uh, sorry for the pun, um, that you might put something out that is a new type of statement architectural piece. So I just, 
you, you know, it might, there might be a very cool new structure that people might like as much, well, some people, so, but I wonder, is that tying our hands too much to say it has to incorporate and look like part of an old school? Because when I think of Darianne, think of all the work they did to make sure that they incorporated the old police building, which I know we're not talking about doing here because you're talking about like gutting the whole thing. To what end? So I, I, I just, I, I, I hate to tie your hands 100% on that, you know? And I don't know how easy it is to look at something and go, okay, I could use this facade, but maybe I could do the back of it's interesting. I do two different facades or if that changes your whole design. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to amend that to, to let him propose an alternate facade if he feels that's better. Exactly. The last thing we want to do in this stage of the game is limit our uh, our architect from his best idea. So uh, yeah. we want we certainly want the, the scope to incorporate uh, you know ideas he has. Right. And the other thing I was thinking about option B, and I don't want to overcomplicate it, but I, I think you you might end up proposing several things in option B. It's not just sort of one option. It right. might be, you know, a, a tear down sort of the hybrid op. We refer to it as the hybrid option where you keep part of the old, the front of the old building and then you add new to the back or tear down what you doesn't work as well. And then it being a whole also a whole new building. Um, and so I didn't see op option B. I saw is you maybe wanting to come back with a couple of different things for us to see. And I However, whether or not you incorporate the hybrid into option A or into option B, I don't really care. I just um, wanted to make certain that we got both, uh, you got your thinking on those two possibilities. I was looking at it that there might be some community interest in preserving the front of the building. And I think that was, my thought was coming more from New Canaan to say, preserve the facade is, is some community interest in doing that. I think if you look at option C, C is build new. And maybe if we modify option C to say, you have the entire site, uh, put it where you think you want to put it. Because option C says a new police headquarters behind the existing building. So now you're trying to put a police headquarters and repurpose or resell the existing building. So you're trying to add a, a use to that site, which I don't know if you're going to have the ability to add another use if you're going to build a new PD in the back and repurpose the, the front building. If there's enough land to really accomplish something that's going to work for everybody there, I do know that the cottage would be moved and replaced. But I just question whether option C, if I could have the ability to just, this is the site, how would you best utilize it? And do I have to best utilize it for two occupants, two additional occupants instead of just one? I think, that's a good I, idea. I think that's a great idea. And that was one of my comments. You know, one of the things that I've thought about, and I, I don't know if you think it's possible or not, is, uh, you know, we're going to reevaluate, you know, we're going to evaluate the relocation costs and, and look at, you know, what those would be and how much we could use in, of other new Canaan buildings. And we want to work with you on that. But another option would be to sort of, you know, build a new one possibly behind, keep the old one functional mm -hmm. in large part. And then I don't know if this is possible or not, and then tear it down. So I would, I like the idea where you have the whole site and then you figure out, you know, what we can best do with that to come up with a new police uh, department on that site. See, and I think that's what sort of option B says in that demolish all right, as you pick apart the sentence, demolish all or portions. So I think that's two pieces, um, a new building with existing facade or new facade. So a new facade means tearing the whole thing down and starting all over again, which is, uh, I'd love to see that prospect as well. Uh, could I make a comment, Brian? I, um, our board of education is in rented space that we pay $330,000 a year for. So renovating that existing building to go back to being an office building rather than a school would be a lot less cost to renovate for that purpose than a police department. And the, and the board of ed only has like 20 employees in, in that space. So the, the issue would be, can we repurpose that? The big issue there would be planning and zoning, allowing us to have two purposes and presumably having to move the South Avenue cottage because it 
you couldn't build a new building for police alone with, un with covered parking back there without removing the South Avenue cottage. So that's the reason of, for, to consider option C. Can, can, we, can the town repurpose the front building for a town purpose economically? I will also need to get some more information from the town on that uh, underground water course that's back there. I know that there's a drainage line that was hampering other uh, development potential back there. So I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit more and find out what it what that is and how that impacts the site. I think, Brian, I, I agree with you. And I think without doing too much wordsmithing here, in option B, you can probably uh, assess, use the best use of the site in option B. And uh, ju just make sure that we're not going to stipulate that the, the facade has to emulate the new building. Correct. Correct. And uh, Brian, as you as you're working on all these plans, how many square feet are you anticipating allocating to the police department? I'm utilizing the space needs assessment that we had. Uh, now the the range will add some square footage to that, but I'm using the document that we already produced for the needs assessment. Which is how many square feet, Brian? Uh, I think it was 20, 24, 25. Okay. 24, 25,000. Without a range, that was without the range. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's assume then, just for for this purpose, twenty five thousand plus a three uh, lane firing range would be our two numbers, or some some combination. Of well, that. yeah, because I think if you you reconfigure the whole thing, you could put in four yeah. lanes or five lanes. I think four which lanes, way it went. Four lanes would be preferred. Yes, I right. agree. So then let's use four lanes. I, I just so we, we're clear that we have some underlying assumptions <clears throat> that we can use and, and stick to for the time being anyway. Well, but if he's, if he, and he's evaluating the old building, he's going to, he's restrained to three. So yeah. a, a range of three or four, depending on what Wait the minute, site why, why are we restrained to three with because the old building? The current width of the, the range the footprint there is, is three wide. But that's but that's it's an insufficiently long range to begin with, Jim. So we're gonna have to rebuild no, it no matter what. No, and we're gonna have to bring in all new machinery and everything else. I mean, it's, it's whether it's whether it even looking. goes back, whether it even goes back and has to be located at the current location is is not necessary. The, the, there was a setup for 75. This is a nit that we don't need to discuss here. Let Brian work it out. Yeah, I'll work it out. I'll work it out. With in regards to one of the guards to parking spaces, Brian, what, what is your underlying assumption there? Uh, I will, that is also within that space needs assessment, Stuart. So okay. there was, there were numbers there for fleet and for staff and for public. So we're still using, using that document that was produced earlier. Stuart, I think the point you're getting at though is, was the, was Brian's estimate before constrained by the existing building? No. Or is it possible we'd want a 10% larger building with 27,000 square feet or 20% larger building? I mean, is there any reason to want a larger building than the 25,000 or 26? I mean, it would be a thousand square feet additional. Well, my answer to that is whenever we do a space needs assessment, it's generic. It's not for, it wasn't tailored because of the existing building. It could be, could be placed anywhere. Right. It was it was a generic document to say now let's apply it to the existing building. Let's apply the same document to a proposed site. Uh, it, it works in any any condition. You know that was the purpose of visiting Bethel and Newtown to see roughly comparable size buildings for roughly yeah. comparable size forces. Right. Yeah. A lot Where's of that? our departments that we're doing are around 50 sworn officers. We have a lot in, in that 50 square sworn size which fall into that 24 to 26,000. And they're, they're very similar for about 50 sworn officers. Great. And it's really what, what swings it higher or lower, what swings that number are whether you're gonna put in a range and what size community space do you want. But if you're looking at locker rooms and patrol functions and administrative and, and dispatch, you know, you're gonna be in that 24 to 26,000 for a department of around 50 sworn. 
we, we have a lot of them on our resume of that size. And I think what when I look at what I'm asked to do, you know, we have a lot of people that come to our office who are interested in architecture. So we take them in as interns and we do a career day and we bring people in. And it, in the way I look at that, it's not for me to say, you're interested in architecture. It's for us to show what we can do in architecture and then find out if they're interested or not. It's not for me to persuade them to go into the profession. In the same sense, when I show you what the capabilities are on your site, it, it's not to persuade you to say you have to go renovation or, or use this site. It's just giving you information so you can then assess whether you like the result. So it's just, it, it's using our talent to say, here's the potential. And, and it's up to you to say you like it or you don't like it. Uh, because I know you're going down a parallel path of looking at new construction. So we're just gonna give you the data that'll help you assess whether this is the right direction for New Canaan or not. Uh, I'm not here to, to wave the flag and say, this is your best solution. I'm here to say these are these are your possible solutions, and then you take it from there. So, so Brian, one thing in this agreement is we don't want the way these options. I didn't see the original email. We don't want the way these options are to restrict you in any way. I think you are well familiar with sort of what um, New Canaan needs for its police department and that site. And we want you to sort of use your talent to figure and and you know to figure out all you know how we could best do it. You know, one is a renovation, one is a new building. If the last option where you I, keeping both buildings seems like that would be pretty complicated to me, but if if, if that's an option, maybe you know maybe we should know about it. Um, one of the things I wanted to make certain that we had in the costs is there are codependencies that are significant between the um, emergency, the EMT building and the police department. And, and you know, I know you're well aware of those. Mm -hmm. And so any of these options you know, that we have, we're gonna need to make certain um, that we continue to uh, you know, service the, the EMT building and, and do either, either through the police department or through modifications to that building. And so right. you know, when you end up doing the cost estimating, you know, we'll need to sort of have different buckets, but that might be some of that. If we move, you know, if we end up putting the police department in a different site, we'll need to do some of that. We'd like to have your cost estimating on what it would cost to, to make the EMT building stand by itself. Um, so those, those are just some of my thoughts. And, and I saw the way I read this, and we, don't, we definitely don't need to wordsmith it here because I think we're pretty close. We just need to do some, some tweaks is, is, I saw some of these options as constraining you and didn't want to. Well, I mean, I think how, how much do you think this is going to take you if, if, on the scope as it is now? That, that's the only comment that Joe had on the, my document. I said 12 weeks, and it, it's, it's important to let you know what you're not going to get with this agreement also. What you're not going to get are uh, floor plans drawn for every solution. We're going to do diagrammatic plans saying this is where a range can go, this is where administration can go. Uh, but we're not going to design every solution down to every wall and, and every uh, floor plan. These are diagrammatic. So you can see this, the area that you need, how it's going to be arranged on the site, where parking is going to be, access, egress. But there's still going to be a schematic design effort following all this, once you find that there's a potential for making this work to the way you all want it to work, uh, we can put costs together on this in a general sense of saying, we know what construction costs are for police facilities in the Fairfield County area. Uh, we, we've, we're doing that now. Or you could take these solutions and send it to a professional cost estimator and they can give you their opinion from a professional cost estimator standpoint. I've given this agreement, you, I've given you the option on whether you wanna utilize a professional cost estimator or whether you want us to just put cost uh, data together based on uh, our historical uh, 
data that we have on bidding police facilities. So it was 12 weeks to do all of the options that we talked about. And it would be additional two weeks if you wanted to send it out to a professional cost estimating firm. Yeah. For, uh, for compensation, it was a price for me to do what I need to do and then an additional expense if you wanted to go out to the cost estimator. Uh, I'm okay with the time. I know there was a, some, in turn, just some telephone conversations about which maybe should shorten it, but I'm, I'm good with that time. I don't, I don't think we should cut you off on that. This is going to take three years to complete. You know, 30 more days right now won't make any difference. I'm, just to go back on to what Penny was saying, I'm, I'm uh, concerned ultimately when you deliver your documents, uh, this group um, uh, will, and of course, town council and others are gonna be needing to look at the costs associated with the various scenarios. And when they do, they're gonna need to have a clear understanding of uh, all the costs. And that's gonna be a challenge, it seems to me. Um, if you were to establish a temporary police headquarters um, for two years, a, a good assumption two years, uh, then where would it be established and how much it, would it cost if we're going to bring in nothing but trailers on an open field, or are we going to attempt to reutilize or utilize an existing building? Um, those are some significant uh, uh, factors, I would think, in, uh, uh, in delivering a cost mm -hmm. estimate. If you're going to attempt to relocate uh, a, a current residential uh, home, uh, then what are the cost of doing that? Uh, those are significant and they have to be, a, 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 they must be viewed as an important factor in the consideration of this uh, site. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to know how you're going to address that. <laughs> well, I don't think Brian is in this task. Yeah. I... Just let me hear Brian's first, if you didn't mind, just, just let's see what, how, how he responds. Well, all of those are good points, Stuart, and all of those have to be addressed in some way. I think there is a conversation that I'll need to have with the police department. Um, it, traditionally, it's been that police departments have been utilizing neighboring communities for some functions, such as prisoner processing and detention. Well, it, for the last year, uh, that has not been possible for police departments just because of COVID. They're, they're just saying we're not taking anybody on. We're hoping that when this gets around to construction, the pandemic's in, behind us and, and that won't be an issue anymore. But there are a lot of variables. There are a lot of variables and you have to establish a working police department within your town limits for two years. So there are only certain ways you can do that. And I think we can use our best judgment on how many square feet, if you want a lease space, how many square feet will you need? And what's the rate for lease space within the town? We're not going to go out and identify where that is right now, though. We just have to put a budget together to say, here's the potential cost. And here's, okay. here's how we're going to solve dispatch, for instance. Um, and here's a potential cost. And I think we can get pretty, uh, pretty close with a contingency. OK, thank you. Sorry, Jim. I I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to hear no. from Brian first. Go ahead. That's what I was going to suggest, but that pretty much what he, he said. Go ahead. Yeah. And getting back to the original question about the um, consultant's cost estimation on top of on top of Brian's, I frankly can't think of a scenario where we wouldn't need that in a public discussion about choices facing the community going forward. I, I would think it's a small price uh, and a small amount of time for information that will help the town bodies decide what and the, and the building committee decide what you know what I should take going forward to me it seems uh, like a, something we would want to have the only reason I, I made it separate and this is my thinking it wasn't anybody's input from New Canaan but my thinking is you might want the same professional cost estimator to be looking at all solutions whether it's 174. South Avenue versus an alternative site for new construction. And this gives you the ability to utilize my cost estimator or some other cost estimator if you wanted to utilize it for, for whatever solutions are out there that the committee's looking at and then make it consistent across you know, both, both scenarios. Oh, that's a great idea. 
So we get apples to apples. Yeah. The, the one thing is, the, uh, in terms of the relocation, we do want you to take into account, we have uh, some buildings uh, in New Canaan that are we could use as swing space. So uh, we might want you to take that. We'll have to discuss it this for a later time, you know, when, that where you could use that as one of the options. You know, you would you probably need trailers or some other things as 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 well. You're good, but we do have we may not need the full uh, square footage to to lease. Yeah, so we'd like to we'd like you to evaluate that if that's if that's possible. Great, great. And then, Brian, what would you need from us as a group as far as understanding of working relationship going forward? I assume you don't want uh, 12 people following you around with clipboards while you, uh, while you look, <laughs> at the, uh, look at the site. Uh, I know we're very excited to, to do that, but uh, um, what in your, uh, in your work experience, what has worked best in that regard? Well, I definitely want access to the police department and, and to talk with the chief and in the department on uh, options moving forward. Obviously it has to work. I think I know what works for police department, but there's always something that we can discuss amongst ourselves in the police department that would work better for them. Uh, so I would want access to them. Uh, it's really how often do you want me to come back and show you any progress? Uh, I could come back in 12 weeks and say, here's my solution. Or I can come back in six weeks and say, you know, this is a partial, this is what we've looked at so far and, and not uh, divulge everything as a final product. Okay. Joe and Jim, uh, what would you guys, uh, what are your guys thoughts on that? More, more input rather than less. Exactly. You know, more, Jim. Jim's, gonna be, uh, Jim's gonna be there with a the clipboard. <laughs> yeah, we were going to nominate Jim and, and give him the clipboard. Um, the other thing we were thinking is, uh, you know, before you, I like the idea of the professional cost estimator and, 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 you know, maybe, you know, having so that we get, get that. And, you know, as you go through these options, we might not want the cost estimator to do every single one, right? You know, there, there might be some that you see are not tenable. So, you know, if, if before we get to that point, we can narrow what, you know, the, they're estimating and, you know, because there's some options that we as a committee in a town don't think would work. I think that that would be beneficial. Yeah, th this would give you the ability to tailor that. So, so sort of the six weeks uh, timeline, is four that what we're six. thinking? Say four to six. Well, four to if, six. You wanna, if you want to designate somebody on the committee as a contact, I can, I can keep them informed and let them know when I'm going to be in town, when I'm going to be on the site. I'd be more than happy to have you come by and and discuss it. If that wants to be Jim, that so be it. I'll volunteer for that. Yay. Yeah. That's a great, I think that's a great idea. Yep. I volunteer, Jim, too. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer for Jim Coffee. <laughs> So, so Brian, in terms of the the you know the document that the town um, ends up signing, uh, maybe you could send us a um, you know just a, a non PDF of this, and we could mark it up a little bit, and and and, and I don't think it'll be an awful lot, but uh, then get something that you know sort of incorporates where we are in this conversation. Yeah. Um, and can we run all those through Bill then? Is that the easiest way to do it? One central. Sure, yeah. Send it. Send it to yeah, Bill. And Bill send it to uh, you know to, to to us for comment. Yeah. And then send it back to Bill to consolidate and go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure otherwise that out. Otherwise, it's otherwise it's just comments all over the place. <laughs> good, good. We'll luck. never get this thing done. Once you get past Article One, Two, and Three, the rest <laughs> of the document is a lot of protections, mostly for the town. Um, right, that looks pretty uh, pretty standard. It's kind right. of boilerplate. A lot of municipalities like this language, and uh, and, and it protects the town and a lot of this. So, okay. Joe, is there anything? Hey, Kevin, that, Kevin that, let that, us know if you need us to run it by the town attorney right. before before you want to sign it. I mean, I don't think we want to give him this draft. We want to get the scope, which is mostly what the building committee will be working on. Yeah, actually, Penny, I'll be working with Bill. Um, you know, the, town, the first selectman does do the contracting for the town. Right. 
And we did not okay. alter any of the language in any of those other articles from the last time it was signed by New Canaan. So uh, we just used it as a template that's worked before. Great. Can you just let us know um, what agreement that was so that uh, if we do need to speak to the, to the town attorney, if Kevin decides to go that route, we can tell them which one they already reviewed. Yes, um, it was, I can do that right now. And I think it was when we did the space needs assessment uh, updating that was two years ago, but let me, let me find it. Well, you can uh, you can send them a copy if they need it, Brian. Uh, that's a, a good idea. So. Yeah, yeah in 11, right. 2018, there was a schematic update. 11 of 2000, 2018. So uh, back one last thing on this. Uh, there was some discussion about changing the time. I think we should stay with Brian's proposal of uh, 12 weeks. Is everybody in agreement on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. That you know, a lot, of, a lot of good preliminary work is going to make the final project a lot easy. It'll be, there'll be less surprises. We'll, we'll be in, in, in better shape. No doubt. Uh, are there other questions for Brian as far as, uh, you know, engagement logistics or anything like that? So we need to, we need to take a vote and to move forward in principle with, uh, with the condition that the final wording is to be worked out? I think that's appropriate, right, as a building committee to, to do that. I mean, that was our charge for the special meeting, so. Uh, I, 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 I move that. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, I think that's unanimous looking at pictures of the voting members. Um, and uh, so, uh, Bill, just Joe yeah. or Kevin, if there's a, an analysis or, or Brian, if you've seen it before on the you know remediation needing to be done at the police station that's been done by an environmentalist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we could get that to, to Bill for the committee so we could all look at it. I don't think we're talking about hiring a new environmentalist at this point. Yeah, and I said to Joe, I've got to dive into the file. Uh, we have a lot of project files for New Canaan Police. I, I'm pretty sure it's in one of those. So let me dig yeah, that he, up. He, he renovated the, he did the previous renovation, so he should have the files. If not, I have Bill looking for him for it as well. There have been, as I recall, Brian, there were three different uh, there was a remediation on the firing range. I believe uh, when we started doing the dispatch center, there was, um, we identified some um, heating, ventilating uh, uh, remediation that needed to be done. And then there was, uh, I don't think it was much, but up on the top floor, we, you know, when we rebuilt that, that was also <clears throat> a remediation study done. So I believe one will find from a, from a hazardous material perspective, Water is a separate issue, but I believe from a hazardous material perspective, the building should be in pretty good shape. Okay. But any other comments on that? As far as the next steps right now, our, our next scheduled uh, regular meeting, I believe is March 11th. I don't know uh, if we're gonna uh, need to have that meeting or not. I think a lot of our uh, paid professionals will be working. Uh, and will not be ready to be reporting uh, back to the committee. So uh, we'll, We'll um, take a. We'll see going forward whether that meeting will be needed or not. And I can send this. I can send this out as a word uh, document. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments for anyone before we wrap up? I'm good. Go ahead. Thanks. This is great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Yes. We couldn't be more excited going forward here, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. This it is exciting. Yeah, it is. Okay. Do you need a motion right. to adjourn? Uh, motion yeah, to, motion yeah. to adjourn. All right. Thank Second. You. All those in favor. All right. Yeah, here we go. See you, Bill. Yeah, take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye now.